Hello everyone and welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking about the IPVO Visualizer software and camera and image adjustments. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we have to do is launch our IPVO Visualizer software. Now in a previous video, I had shown you how to place the icon for launching that software down here on your taskbar. As you can see, I have eliminated my icon and I'm going to show you how to do that again, just in case this is the first video in this series that you're watching. Click on the Start button in the lower left hand corner and scroll down to the eyes. Once you find your IPVO Visualizer software, you can right click on it, select more, and select pin to taskbar. Once your icon is pinned to your taskbar, you can click on that icon to launch the software. Okay, I'm gonna maximize the window and we're going to be talking about the camera and image adjustments. Your camera and image adjustments are all located over here on the left hand side of your window. The first button at the top is the select camera button. So I'm going to go ahead and click that and I just want you to be aware that if you do have both an IPVO document camera as well as a webcam attached to your computer selecting this down arrow will give you the option to toggle between the two of them. Below the Select Camera drop-down is the refresh rate. You can go ahead and leave yours set to 60 Hz. The contrast slider will either increase the contrast, making the lights lighter and the darks darker, or you can decrease the contrast, blending the two dark and light together more closely. Most often, I find it best to leave it right directly in the center. And by the way, if you do change any of these, don't fret. All you have to do is click the Reset to Default button and all of the options will be reset to the defaults. The Hue slider allows you to change the hue of your image. The Vertical and Horizontal Keystone sliders will allow you to change the vertical and horizontal keystoning of your image. That's going to become most relevant as you're standing in front of your interactive whiteboard and recording your lesson. The camera is likely to be below the center point of the rectangular interactive whiteboard, which will make the board appear to not have square corners. To fix this issue, adjust your vertical keystone so the board appears to be completely square. Below the camera select button is the zoom button. Now this is a digital zoom, and it's the same digital zoom that you have directly on the document camera proper. But if I were to increase the zoom, you can see that it certainly gets larger, but you can see that it also pixelates quite severely. And here we're only zoomed about a quarter of the way. So once I were to zoom quite a bit more, you'd recognize that it actually becomes difficult to see. So I recommend that instead of using the zoom, that you take and adjust the head on your camera so that it's closer to your subject. That way, the full power of the 8 meg megapixel camera will be realized. Below the zoom button is the rotate button. If I had placed this book in an incorrect orientation, you can select these buttons and change the orientation of your subject around. You can also change the angle just by clicking on and dragging that green little ball. You can of course always reset it by clicking the reset button and you can flip vertically or horizontally by the click of a button at the bottom of this window. Below the rotate and mirror button is the resolution button. Now I do recommend that you don't use a resolution any lower than 1920 by 1080. 
you'll start to lose some clarity in the image. The higher the resolution, the clearer the image is going to appear. As you can see, I just switched from 1920 by 1080 to 3264 by 1840, and the image got significantly cleaner. You can just go ahead and select a resolution that is best for you. Below the Resolution and Ratio button is the Exposure button. The Exposure button allows you to either increase or decrease the brightness of the camera's image. The Exposure Lock checkbox would allow you to lock the exposure so that the camera's auto exposure will no longer be taking effect. Say, for example, you're using your document camera in your classroom and your first bank of lights is off so the students can see the interactive whiteboard. You could go into your exposure and increase your exposure so that they could see the subject just a little bit clearer. I'm going to turn the light on my document camera on and you will see that overexposes the image at the current exposure setting. So, I'll turn down the exposure until I get a properly exposed image. If you have your exposure lock checkbox checked, then the camera's auto exposure won't take effect, which means if I were to turn the lights back on in this room, the image is going to be overexposed. If I remove the check mark from the exposure lock box, you can see that the exposure automatically resets. Under the Exposure button is the White Balance button. White Balance is measured in Kelvin, so this is 3060 Kelvin. And the higher the number, the more yellow or warmer your image is. The lower the number, the cooler or more blue your image would appear. The White Balance will adjust automatically unless the White Balance Lock checkbox is checked. Below the white balance button is the focus button. The focus slider will allow you to focus on things manually that are closer to your camera head or further away from your camera head. The AFC or autofocus continuous radial button when selected means that the camera will continually try to autofocus on the subject that is in the field of view. The autofocus single button when selected, will lock the focus on the subject in the viewfinder. So even though the manual focus isn't selected, when I move my camera head closer to my subject because autofocus single has already been activated, the camera won't automatically refocus once I've moved the camera head. I can now either manually focus by dragging the slider to the right, or I can uncheck the manual focus button and check the autofocus continuous button. Below the focus button are the video filters. The video filters are designed to allow the students that you may have in your classroom that are visually impaired to have an easier time seeing the subject in the field of view. For example, the black and white filter, the inverted black and white filter, red on black, yellow on black, and so forth. If you find that you don't need those, all of those filters, you can go up into the camera, click on the advanced settings option, and remove any one of those or all of those filters if you wish. Well, that's all there is to the camera and image adjustments. I hope this video has been helpful, and I hope you have a great day.